Hallelujah. Say amen for Sister Michelle as she comes. Evangelistic Church of God in Christ. We are under the leadership of Bishop Designate Kenneth Preston and Missionary Lady Dorothy Preston. Amen. We are going into our affirmation of faith at this time. We affirm our faith in the Bible, congregation. We believe the Bible to be the inspired and only infallible written word of God. We affirm our faith in God, congregation. We believe that there is only one God, eternally existent in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. We affirm our faith in the Blessed Hope congregation. We believe in the Blessed Hope, which is the rapture of the Church of God, which is in Christ at His return. We affirm our faith in repentance congregation. We believe that the only means of being cleansed from sin through repentance and faith in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We affirm our faith in salvation, congregation. We believe that regeneration by the Holy Ghost is absolutely essential for personal salvation. We affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, congregation. We believe that the redemptive work of Christ on the cross provides healing for the human heart in answer to believe in Christ. We affirm our faith in the Holy Spirit, congregation. We believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit, according to Acts 4, is given to believers who ask for him. We affirm our faith in sanctification, congregation. We believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit, by whose indwelling we will be able to live a holy and separated life in the present Amen. In the way of announcements on Wednesday morning, tune in to 90.1 radio station at 6.30 to 7 o'clock a.m. to hear Dr. Toby Momar speak there. On Wednesday afternoons, we have ninth hour prayer at 3 o'clock p.m. from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. You can dial in 978-990-5262 and the access code is 777-777. 3021. Um, you can send your prayer request for that line to mtech church at mtech church at yahoo.com. And we would love for you to dial in and join us on that prayer call. We are being blessed. We are getting stories of healing, just all kinds of responses from this prayer call. And when praises go up, we know praises go up, blessings come down. So if you can join us, don't miss your blessing. On Wednesday evenings, we have Bible study back here in the temple um, at 6 o'clock p.m. And that is being led by our own Dr. Toby Moma as well. And on Sunday mornings, you are welcome to join us here for service. We start um, 945. If you cannot join us, we are on Facebook Live about 10 o'clock a.m. If we don't have any technical difficulties, you can join us there. But we would love to have you in person. We are practicing safety. Uh, we have plenty of space, sanitizer, temperature checks, masks. We are being safe. So if you need to come to the house of the Lord, you are welcome here. If you'd like to become a member, go to our website, mtechchurch.com, click on the contact button, leave your information, and a member of our leadership staff will be in contact with you for membership. If you'd like to sow into our ministry, you can also go to our website, click on the give button, and sow there. You can also cash up us at dollar sign MTEC. 1988 
and support us through our cash app. You can also just mail it in to 418 Lakeshore Road, Jackson, Mississippi, 392212. Um, you have all of those options to support us, and we welcome your support. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. And at this time, we are going into praise and worship. Amen. Glory. Today, we are going to welcome Psalmist Dr. Rita to lead us in praise and worship. And after her, please rise to receive Dr. Toby Momai as he brings us the word of God. God bless you. This is home. I know I went home, but this is home. Amen. So good morning, everybody. And this morning, I just want to do something different. I have been instructed by my head to do it differently. And when the head says do it differently, you have to do it. But I still have to say this. I say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your ways. I say yes. Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart, I'll agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. I say yes, I say yes, Lord. seat and I just want to thank God for giving us the opportunity to say yes to him. We said yes and traveled to Nigeria last month for our annual missions trip along with the memorial service for my father-in-law and God saw us through. There were so many things that were challenging us in going on that trip but I will just share one brief testimony. God took us safely in there. We landed on a date that was going to be a contentious date in the capital of Nigeria. We landed on the 26th of July, and that was meant to be the day we'll have a court case for a prominent person who's been trying to lead a group of people in Nigeria. But God knew that we would have a lot of confusion if we did anything that week. And by his own supernatural power, I don't know how, but the date for the court case was shifted and removed from that day, giving us the protection and the peaceful environment we needed to execute our missions. God is awesome. God is awesome. And again, we left on the 2nd of August to come back here. The very next Monday after that, there was an attack at the police station very close to the church we stayed in. The information is diverse, but they killed people, they took over the arms of the police station, so much chaos right in the very city, the very community we did our outreach. But God took us out the week before. Isn't he faithful? So when you say yes to him, he knows what he's doing. I'm going to ask Sister Asia to share some of the pictures that we've put up together. Um, this is a team of ophthalmologists that went with us on the trip. 
and this is the whole group. I know this image is small, but this is the entire team that worked all through the days of the outreach. That's my classmate and her husband that joined us. They are in town there. The medical students, we had about 40 non-medical volunteers. We had over 50 medical students. We had about 20 physicians. We had ophthalmologists, we had pediatricians, we had internists. God really did awesome things. And one of the testimonies that we saw and heard there was, the community said nobody had ever come to do this kind of thing for them. And different people actually came to us and they were asking us, are you contesting for an election? We said, no, we do this every year. So this is how politicians act. They do stuff for you to get your favor. But this was totally out of, you know, God's guidance. God directed us to do this for no benefit. And some of the pictures show the family reception and the family church service for my, the memorial service for my late father-in-law. We had that in the morning or the Sunday. And then the, the Friday morning and Friday evening were um, medical outreach and spiritual outreach. Saturday morning, Saturday evening was another medical outreach and spiritual outreach. And on Sunday morning, we had the church service. But I want you to realize one thing. When God has decided to do something, the best thing to do is join him. The best thing to do is join him. He knows what he's doing. He's capable of doing it. God showed us extreme favor. I tell you, favor. It was beyond our understanding. From the planning, this is Apostle Mosi Madaba. He was the man of God that ministered for the three days. Apparently, the reverend that was overseeing the church testified that about 20 years ago, he, was, he paid money to travel to hear this man speak. And here we are bringing the man to his church to minister to him. He couldn't believe it. He said, this is awesome that God has actually blessed him in this ministry. So all around, we had testimonies of people blessing the Lord, thanking God for giving us the opportunity to travel. But I just want to thank God for this church. If we did not have this church to work with, it may have been a challenge. I want to thank God especially for my bishop. I want to thank God for my first lady. The encouragement from them is awesome, awesome. I want to thank God for every member of this church, Sister Janet, and her family, beautiful, thank you. I want to thank God for everybody who's done one thing or the other to keep this church going. You are a blessing. You are a blessing. And I want you to know that God sees the reward. You don't know it, but he has blessed somebody right there in a small village in Nigeria by what you do in this church to keep this church going. Know that God does not leave people unrewarded. He will bless you. He will bless you. You've done so much for me. And I cannot tell it all. If I had 10,000 tongues, it would not be enough.
Jesus. Let's put our hands together for Dr. Rita Moma. Awesome, awesome, powerful. Father, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We honor you in this place. You alone are glorified. You alone are magnified. Let no flesh glory in your presence. Let no man stand in front of your people, but let the Spirit of God speak expressly. Let it heal, let it save, let it deliver. Let no man, woman, boy, girl, under the sound of my voice, leave the same way they came. But cause a revolution, a transformation, a turnaround, a changeover, a makeover. Let there be a total makeover after today in the life of your people. We commit today into your hands, even this service. We know that all the angels are here. God the Father is here. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We just surrender all to you and we say, have your way in this place. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. If you don't mind standing with me for the reading of the word, just want to honor the Bishop Designee Preston and the First Lady District Missionary Preston, no more district, but Missionary Preston, honor them for their honor to let me stand before the people of God today. It's an honor every time we stand before this pulpit to, sh in this pulpit to share the, the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm going to read a scripture from the book of Matthew chapter 13. I don't know if Asia, you have that slide that I said that has one, two, three. Matthew chapter 13. For the last three months, I've been sharing on what I call the incorruptible seed. Someone say the incorruptible seed. And it started when I read a verse of scripture that said, Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he's born of God. And I said, Lord, how come the world, the church is living in sin when the word of God says the seed of God makes us incorruptible? So I started sharing on what I call the mustard seed versus the mingled seed, the coriander seed, which is the, which is the manna versus the corrupted seed. And today we're going to be sharing what I call the wheat seed. Someone say the wheat seed versus the weed seed. Did everybody get this? Everybody got this? Praise the Lord. This is a wheat seed. What's a wheat seed? W-H-E-A-T. Now, don't go home and tell your parents I spoke about weed. I'm not speaking about what the world calls weed in the Bible is what the Bible calls tears. It's what the Bible, because, you know, in 21st century, people don't understand what weed means anymore. <laughs> It, it, we're going to read the scripture in Matthew 13. It means tears. It means like things that hang out with, with, the, with, the, with the wheat. So let's read Matthew chapter 13 from verse 24 to 30. The Bible says there, another parable put Jesus forth unto them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men sleep, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, where there shall be weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth. What's it shine forth? As the sun in the kingdom of their father. Father, your word is anointed. As we preach it today, let it go for with power. Let it heal, save, deliver, and make whole. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. We can have our seat. Thank you so much for the standing for the reading of the word. I have a book coming out shortly. It's on assertive initiative, and it's about how you can be a light in a dark world. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? So when I read this scripture, Matthew 13, verse 40, 43, I was very excited. If you look at that last verse, verse 43, the Bible says that then, someone say then. That means there's a reason why you're not shining. The Bible says, then shall the righteous shine as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Somebody say, I'm the righteous son of God in Christ Jesus. But why are you not shining? 
the reason why you're not shining is because of what happened in the preceding verses from verse 35, from verse 24 all the way down to 43. There's a reason why the shining like the sun is not showing forth in the church. And the reason is because an enemy has done this. Somebody say an enemy has done this. The reason your, your life is supposed to be a, 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 a blessing, a, it's supposed to be a, 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 a container of wheat. Let me explain something to you. That thing you're holding in your hand is, is wheat. It's not weed. It's, you see, wheat is different from weed. Am I talking to somebody? The will of God for your life is that you be filled with the finest of wheat. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? I can tell you the scriptures in Psalm 18. The Bible says in Psalm 18, the Bible talks about Psalm 81. The Bible says he wanted to feed, he, he, he would have fed them with the finest of wheat. Psalm 147, the Bible says he blessed them and he make a peace and fillet you with the finest of wheat. Someone say the finest of wheat. I'm going somewhere with this. Our lives are jacked up because we have not embraced the philosophy of the wheat. Am I talking to somebody? Our lives are not shining like the sun. Somebody say shine like the sun. The sun has no bad days. The sun doesn't wake up one morning and say, I have a bad mood. I have a gray cloud around me. No, it doesn't matter how many clouds are around the sun. It's going to shine. Somebody say it's going to shine. Your life is not dependent on your environment. Oh, I'm in Mississippi. Oh, I work for the state. Oh, I have a, hu a husband who is jacked up. No, you are like the sun. Every morning you wake up shining. But the reason why we are not shining is because we have not embraced the philosophy of the wheat. Someone say an enemy has done this. When God created you, the whole idea was he will, be, he will fill you with the finest of the wheat. And this example Jesus gave. He said in the last day something is going to happen. The Lord is going to come and he's going to gather the harvest. Somebody said there's a harvest coming. I said this the last time, Elder. I said when God talks about seed, he has a harvest on his mind. When God starts talking about seed, the coriander seed, seed, the wheat seed, seed, the mustard seed, somebody say get ready for harvest. And the reason is because the Bible says in Matthew 13, in the last days that there's going to be a gathering of the harvest. But there's going to be a difference between the seed, the good seed, and the bad seed. Between the wheat and the wheat. Let me prove it to you. The Bible says there, the good seed in verse, I think verse 39 or 40. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. And the Bible says in the last days there's going to be an ingathering. God is going to bring in a harvest and he's going to burn up the chaff that the wicked ones have gathered. And he's going to gather up the wheat that the good ones have gathered. And God told me to tell somebody, as we enter the last days, all this COVID, all this recession, all this drought is all a sign of the last days. You've got to decide, are you a wheat or are you a weed? Am I talking to somebody? Because the Bible says here, the children of the kingdom are the good seed. So I said the good seed. And the Bible talks about the good seed. He says the good seed is like the wheat that was planted. Let me explain to you. The Lord spoke to me. I was on call yesterday and I, was, I went to see a patient and the Lord spoke to me. I said, tell my people three things about the weed. Tell my people three things about the weed that they must be careful about. You see, if I give you a hundred dollar bill and you don't know what a fake $100 bill is, you might be deceived. Did somebody get what I'm talking about? You see, the problem with the weed and the wheat is that the weed, W-E-E-D, looks exactly like the wheat, W-H-E-A-T. When the Bible says that an enemy came in the middle of the night and planted a seed that grew up a few months later, and it was in the beginning, they look just the same. The people who worked in the farm didn't know the difference. But when they grew up, so when they grew up, you could see the difference. And God said to tell the people, beware of camouflage. Someone say camouflage. I'm trying to explain to you how to detect a weed, W-E-E-D, 
so that you don't become a, 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 a cast out seed. You don't miss the harvest because there's a harvest coming in Miracle Temple. There's a harvest coming to the Preston family. There's a harvest coming to the Mama family. There's a harvest coming to the Howard family. But if you don't know what a wheat is, you'll be planting weeds thinking you'll get a wheat. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, men don't gather grapes or figs from thistles. They don't gather grapes from thorns. Matthew 7 verse 16. He said, every good tree brings forth good fruit. A corrupt tree brings forth evil thistles. He says, a, it says, a good tree cannot bring forth good fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. By their fruit you shall know them. What am I trying to say? It is, it is madness to sow weed, W-E-E-D, and expect wheat. Am I talking to somebody? I'll give you three characteristics of the weed, W-E-E-D, that you need to be aware of and beware of in this last days. Because the harvest is about to take place. And many of us are coming to church, lifting our hands, praising God, not knowing that we are sowing weeds. Somebody say weeds. Expecting fruits. But when they come up, they are just chaff. So God told me, number one, beware of camouflage. What's a camouflage? Look at Job 31. I'm going to give you a few scriptures today. Job 31. Job 31. Verse 38 to 40. The church that lives in camouflage will be like a weed and will not see the harvest when it comes. The church that lives in, in make-believe, the church that lives in, 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 in cover-up, that means this is what, this, what you see is not what you get. Somebody tells you I'm a Christian, but in their inner closet, in their, in their inner place, they are doing what a Christian is not doing. That's camouflage. Job 31, 38. The Bible says, if my land cry against me, verse 38. If my land cry against me, Brother Orlando, or the furrows, that's where I planted. He says, therefore complain. Then he says here, if I have eaten the fruits thereof without money or cost the owners thereof to lose their life. Look at what the Bible says. Let thistles grow instead of wheat and cockle instead of barley. Somebody say, let thistles. Thistles is weed. Thistles is like tears. Let thistles grow instead of wheat. What am I trying to say here? This man said, I may be living a large lie. I may be living a life that looks like I have everything. But he says that I'm eating somebody's food that I didn't pay for. I'm cheating somebody. I'm living in, 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 in hypocrisy. I'm living in idolatry. I'm not doing the will of God from a pure heart. He says, if I live a hypocritical life, he said, it is guaranteed. My, what I sow, the, the wheat that I expected will become tears, will become weed. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? I want you to avoid a situation where you are what I call blindsided. Oh, I didn't know. This can't be possible. I've shared the story several times of a pastor in Nigeria. Pastor of the church in Onitsha, Nigeria was going to preach. He was preaching. He came back from a crusade. He preached powerfully. He told his wife, wow, this crusade was awesome. We had hundreds of people give their lives healings, deliverances. And his wife said, you left me alone with the, my daughter and you went to preach. And she slapped him. In Nigeria, that's not called domestic violence. It's just called a woman who's upset. <laughs> Praise God. If you call the police, they'll be like, sorry, we don't handle this kind of situation. We have too many things on our, on our plate. But the, young, the man was upset and he said, I'm going to send you back to your father tomorrow morning. And he got up in the morning. His wife grabbed him and said, please, don't do this. I'm sorry. I was just upset. And he pulled her away. And he got into his car. And he drove away to take her back. He was driving back to her father, to her father's house, to tell her father that I'm done with this marriage. Your wife is, your daughter is irresponsible. She's disrespectful. And as he was driving, an 18-wheel truck hit him. What happened? He was sowing weeds. Someone say weeds. 
He was sowing tears, expecting wheat. He was living a camouflage life. He was living a life that, that made people think he was a, a man of God, but he had unforgiveness in his heart. The 18-wheel truck hit him, and before he could say, Jesus is Lord, he found himself in hell. And he would ask the angel, I can't be here, I'm a preacher. And they said, you did not forgive your wife. But you know what happened? To cut the story short, he was in the grave, he was in the mortuary in Nigeria for three days. They recorded it, there's a video of it, you can buy it. And this man, his wife read Hebrews 11 that said, dead women had their husbands raised back to life. That dead, that, sorry, women had their husbands raised back to life. And this woman said, Lord, I'm not giving up. I believe my husband can come back to life. On the fourth day, she took his body to a crusade in Onicha, Nigeria. And this man was raised from the dead. And when he woke up, he told the church, God told me to tell you, forgive, forgive. Don't live a hypocritical life. Don't live a camouflage life. Don't put a make-believe. Don't make people think you are, you are what you are not. Don't live a camouflage life. And he's still alive today sharing the story. Let me read Jeremiah chapter 12. Why is the wheat seed the harvest seed? The weed does not produce a harvest. If you eat a weed, you eat poison. Am I talking to somebody? You see, this wheat is what gives you bread. It's what gives you confectionaries that Sister India makes cakes from. This wheat is what gives you, um, what else, um, uh, donuts. It makes all those nice things that you like to eat. If you take a weed and eat the weed, you, ca you cause poison in your system. If you want a life that produces harvest, you've got to be like the wheat seed. Someone say be like the wheat seed. Jeremiah 12 verse 9, the Bible says, My heritage is like unto a speckled bird. The birds around her are against her. He says, come assemble all the beasts. Jeremiah 12, verse 9 to 13. Assemble all the beasts of the field. Come to devour. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They have made it desolate. And it mourns unto me. The whole land is desolate. Because no man lays it to heart. That he says this. The spoilers have come upon their high places through the wilderness. For the sword of the Lord shall devour from the one end of the land to the other. Then he says, verse 12, I believe, or 13. They have sown wheat, but they shall reap thorns. Someone said they have sown wheat, but they shall reap thorns. Catch this. God is saying there that the people who sow wheat, but they don't get wheat fruits are people who are speckled. Someone says speckled. Verse 9 says, Jeremiah 12 verse 9, my people are speckled. What does speckled mean? That means multicolored. You go to church on Sunday, you're like, whoo. When I see you in the office on Monday, you're cursing your co-worker out. You're like, what color? Have you seen those women? They wear red today. They wear green tomorrow. They wear gray too. I mean, their hairstyle, you're like, okay, what, what color of hair do you really have? multicolored and God said if I see a multicolored Christian they will try to sow wheat but they will raise up tears I'm asking somebody here are you living a camouflage life because I'm here to tell you in the in the in the kingdom those who will benefit in the last days are those what you see is what you get I'm living this what you see is what you get I'm not trying to be what I'm not. I'm not trying to be a, a, a bigger than I am. No, no, what you see is what you get. If you want to develop a harvest, you have to have that mentality to see that. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? So please, number one thing, beware of the camouflage spirit. It's very rampant in our current generation. Very rampant. Number two, God told me, beware of the cheap. Am I talking to somebody? Beware of the cheap, because you see, let me explain something to you. This weed that you see, my wife bought it for dollars. Do you know that a weed, you can pick up weed on the side of the road, not, not marijuana now, but weed, W-E-E-D. The weed seed 
Nobody cares. You see, nobody, if you go to buy weed seed, it'll be like pennies. It'll be like cents. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? You see, anything that does not cost you something, be careful about it. In these last days, we have the easy believism. We have the spineless. We have the jelly. They have the microwave Christianity. If it takes too much effort, oh, I don't... I want to go on missions with you, Dr. Toby. Is there a five-star hotel in your village? I need running water with a sauna. I need somebody to do my pedicure. Hey, in my village, you're not going to get that. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? Do you see those doctors, those nurses, those pharmacists? Some of them came from out of town, and they had to sleep on the floor in my father's house, no air conditioner, share bathroom, six of them, males, females. I'm, I'm talking about the generation we live in needs to get away from this easy believism. Because John chapter 12 verse 24 says, except the corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abided alone. Somebody say, it must take something from you. If you want it to stay with you. I'm a doctor after 20 plus years of training. I didn't just show up and start practicing medicine. But what am I trying to say? The key for the last day's church is to understand salvation is free, but it's not cheap. It's going to take something from you. Jesus said, if any man will follow me, let him take up his cross and follow me. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? So this is what I'm trying to say here. If the Bible says, except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abides alone. It means that the reason why the corn of wheat is going to produce a lot of fruit is because it died to itself. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? It paid the price. It said, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to look for convenience. I'm going to look for what is going to be the will of God. And God sent me to tell you something. It's not by power. It's not by might. But if you stick your neck out to do the will of God, God will give you the harvest. Am I talking to somebody? Look around. Those who have just followed the crowd never end up anywhere. Look around. It's, very, it's, very, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a truism. People who just, you know, my, my dad used to say, those who, those who get rich quick die young. I heard it from him the first time. Those who get rich quick die young. And it's actually in the Bible. Those who want to make it overnight, they don't want to go through the process. It, they end up living it. The Bible says they will live it halfway through their lives. Over and over again, We've had almost 170 shootings, homicide in the state of Mississippi. And you hear of people who one day they are driving Lamborghinis and Ferraris. The next day they've been shot. What happened? What happened? That life was not sold out. I, I, I'm here to tell somebody, if it does not take from you, it will not stay with you. Am I talking to somebody? The reason why the wheat seed has sustainable fruits is because it died to itself. It paid the price. Stop looking for the easiest way out. It's not always the right way out. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? Oh, I don't want to pay. I don't want to. I just want to get the easiest way out of college. I just want to get the one-year degree. There's no one-year degree. If it's a one-year degree, it's not a degree. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I just want to get the, 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 the six-month certificate. I don't know how far that certificate will take you. When you pay the price, you will see the results. Is somebody get what I'm talking about? So it, it, beware of what they call cheap. Weed, W-E-E-D, is cheap. It's available on the side of the road, but it doesn't produce any long-term result. You see, if, it's, if it doesn't take from you, it will not stay with you. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 126, Verse 4, the Bible says, turn again our captivity, O Lord. Psalm 126, verse 4, turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams of the south. They that sow in tears, someone says sow in tears, shall reap in joy. He that goes forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall 
doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Many of us want to end up with verse 6. Oh, I want to rejoice. I want to bring the sheaves. But the Bible says the man who brought those sheaves, he was sowing in tears. He was, he was being in precious seed. Where were you when he was sowing in tears? Am I talking to somebody? A pastor in Nigeria called Bishop David Oyedipo. In 2000, his, in 1998, his mentor died. His mentor was Archbishop Benzile Dahosa, who started the very first Christian university in Nigeria. Archbishop Benzile Dahosa died suddenly at the age of 59. And he, op he had opened a university. His wife took over the ministry. In the account, they had only 48,000 naira. And they had employed professors, they had employed deans, they had payroll to pay. And this woman who took over the ministry was, she called the, the bishop, David Oyedikwa, who was the son to the archbishop. I said, what are we going to do? I have to pay the salaries, I have to maintain the school. I can't shut it down. This is the vision God gave my husband. Do you know that for two years, David Oyedikwa paid the salaries of the staff of Benson at Dahosa University. Every month he'll send five million. He'll send ten million. Do you know that after two years, David Oyedikbo opened his own university, and it's called Covenant University, and that university is now the number one university in Nigeria after twenty years. Am I talking to somebody? People will say, "Oh, how did he get there?" He sowed seed. He sowed precious seed. It was Bishop T.D. Jakes that said, I was an overnight success 20 years in the making. Because when I was preaching in the back doors of West Virginia, when nobody knew who I was, and I was sowing seeds, going from church to church, ministry from revival to revival, then they see the success I am today. And they say, he's an overnight success. No, they had sown some precious seed. What kind of seed are you sowing? Are you sowing cheap seed or are you sowing costly seed? Because if you want to see harvest, you can't get away with cheap seed. What a man sows, that's what he's going to get. When you come to the altar, you, pick, you, you look for the, the currency that, that weighs the most in your pocket. The one that has the most gravity. And you just toss it in the box. That's the kind of future you're creating. A cheap seed produces a cheap future. But the Bible says a man who sows precious seed, precious seed, precious seed, that one that goes with weeping. I know Bishop Preston has been weeping. Ah, this money that they are making me spend as a bishop. But God said there's a harvest coming. Because you can't sow precious. The Bible says doubtless. Someone say doubtless. They will come rejoicing. So I want to be at the cutting edge of the last day's harvest. I don't want God to gather the harvest and I'll be left out of it. So what am I going to do? I'm going to beware of the camouflage. What did the camouflage? I'm going to beware of the cheap. Someone say the cheap. Number three, I'm going to beware of comfort. Someone say comfort. And I'm saying this because it's, it's, it's kind of the last thing God spoke to me about. And he said that there's a generation we live in, Bishop Preston, that is enamored and is, 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 is caught up in the spirit of comfort. Jesus never promised you comfort. He promised you crucifixion. If any man will follow me, let him take up his cross and follow me. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But the life I live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who died for me. Let me explain to you why I said comfort is an enemy. Every time a wheat seed is sown. So what's a wheat seed? Do you know that a wheat seed can only be sown in cold environments, Sister Janet? You don't sow a wheat seed in Mississippi in the summer. You don't sow a wheat seed in the summer in Alabama. No, you sow it in Minnesota. You sow it in Wisconsin. You sow it in up north where the weather is, is, is cold. And God told me to tell somebody, could it be that the reason why your life has produced weeds, W-E-E-D, instead of wheat, W-H-E-A-T, is because you always want to hang around where you're comfortable. 
You don't want to go where it's cold. But the wheat seed is not like the weed. You see, the weed, W-E-E-D, can, can grow anywhere. It can grow in the heat. It can grow in the cold. It can grow where there's water. It can grow where there's no water. The weed does not care about the environment. But the wheat is very particular about the environment. He says, I'm, he says, I'm going to where God wants me to go. It may not be comfortable, but it's the will of God. Am I talking to somebody? And I'm here to tell the church, in Miracle Temple, we're not going to be looking for people who make us comfortable. We're going to go to where the people are hurting, where the souls are not saved, where the women are slipping and dipping and ripping. I'm here to tell somebody because the last day's harvest is not about who makes you comfortable. Oh, I don't want this kind of guy in my church. That's not what God is calling us to. The last day's church, God is calling us to, to go to the byways and the hedges, to go where there's drug dealers, where there's pimps, where there's prostitutes, where the people have never heard the name of Jesus. That is why the wheat produces a harvest. It does not stay where it's comfortable. It stays where it may be cold. It stays where, do you realize that the light shines brightest in the darkness? The light does not shine brightest where there's other lights. No, the light shines brightest when there's darkness around it. So God sent me with a word to tell somebody, beware of the camouflage, beware of the cheap, and beware of the comfortable. Because where God wants you to go, it may not look comfortable, but that's where your harvest is. In Joshua chapter 3, verse 15, I'll just read this last verse. The Bible says, Jordan overflows its banks at the time of the harvest. Someone say, at the time of the harvest. Why is it that it's when the harvest is about to come that the greatest persecution begins to take place? But many of us miss our harvest, Sister Barbara, because it's in the time of discomfort that we stop coming to church, that we stop reading the Bible, that we stop hanging out with the Word, that we stop listening to the Word of God, that we stop believing God. And God says, when the Jordan overflows its banks, it's actually the time of the harvest. When you see the devil getting irritable and upset, get ready, something is about to happen. Something is about to break through. The harvest is about to come. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? The Bible says in the last days that iniquity shall abound and the love of many shall wax cold. What I'm asking you to do today at Miracle Temple is to stop just being a mama and papa boy. Stop being, oh, my homeboys and my people who, no, no, no. I want you to go outside your comfort zone. Somebody said go outside your comfort zone. And invite people to church that you're not comfortable with. Invite those people that you know have never been to church. The people on the side of the road, the people who are, they are drinking and smoking, those are the people God wants us in this last days because the iniquity shall abound and the love of many shall wax cold. He said, if you are gonna be like the wheat, that is where I'm planting you. Am I talking to somebody? Where the love has waxed cold. Because that's the environment you are going to blossom. Don't, bl don't think you're going to be planted in church all the days of your life. And no, 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 no. The harvest is going to come when you step out and become a wheat seed, not a weed seed. I want to stand up on our feet. I believe today God wants to take you from weed to wheat. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? From weed, W-E-E-D, to wheat, W-H-E-A-T. A man of God was sharing the story, Umar Akwa in Nigeria. He said, when he gave his life to Jesus in the 1960s, every night a man would wake up and he'll be crying and he'll be singing in that house he lived in in Calabar, Nigeria. Shall I go to my maker empty-handed? And he said, when Umar Akwa asked him, he said that, when I gave my life to Jesus, I was so old, I couldn't bring souls to him. And he was asking, will I go to my maker empty-handed? Listen to me, friends. I don't want you to stand before the throne of God and God says, where is the harvest? Somebody say, where is the harvest? The harvest of souls. Bishop Preston, missionary, Preston, the church, Miracle Temple, sowed seed, precious seed 
for these missions that my wife and I went to. That's what I mean by sowing precious seed for the harvest. When you see God on the last days, don't let him say, where is the harvest? Don't let God say, I have blood of people on your hands because you did not carry the mentality of a seed. You said, oh, I don't want to talk to those kind of people. I don't want to hang out with those kind of people. I don't want to be mistaken for that kind of person. No, those people are where your harvest is located. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? I remember the story of David in 1 Chronicles chapter 12. There was a plague in the land, just like there's a plague now in America. And what did David do? He went to the, to the, to the, to the threshing floor of Arana. What do you do on a threshing floor? That's where you break wheat up. And Arana said, I will give you everything free of charge. And David said, I will not give to the Lord that which costs me nothing. First yeah. Chronicles 21. Well, which is where I'm going with this. Do you know what they do on the threshing floor? They break up wheat. Somebody say wheat. How come it was that place that David bought that they raised up an altar that stopped the plague and became a temple for God? Hear me and hear me well. God told me to tell somebody, if you will be like the wheat on the threshing floor today, God will raise up an altar. COVID will not see you. COVID will not touch your family. You will become an altar, a temple for God, a place where the name of Jesus will be glorified I'll read this scripture then I'll pray Proverbs 11 verse 29 because this is a scripture for the young people the Bible says Proverbs 11 29 he that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind and the fool shall be servant to the wise the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life and he that winneth souls is wise. Listen to this. The Bible says, He that troubleth his own house shall be like the wind. Do you know what that means? Like weed, useless, of no value. God told me to tell somebody, Your value is a function of what you value. If you value the word, if you value the, the pulpit from which Pastor Preston preaches, Bishop Preston preaches, if you value the, the fellowship of the saints, God says you will become valuable. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah. It doesn't matter what they call you in school, nerd, you know, uh, church boy. If you value the word, God says you will not be like the wind. All those boys you see who are pulling their pants down and, and smoking and dipping and ripping and all those girls you see that are hanging out with boys. The Bible says that he that troubleth his own house will end up like the wind. But the Bible says that a man who is righteous, a child who is righteous will be like a tree of life. And God told me to tell somebody, if you want your life to count, the number one thing you need to do is to surrender that life to Jesus. Totally sell yourself out to Jesus. Like the wheat seed, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But the life I live, I live by the faith of the Son of God in Christ Jesus. I gave my life to Jesus in 1989 as a 16, 15 year old. And my life has never gone backwards. My life has always gone upward. Medical school, masters in London, training in New York, medical doctor, medical director, assistant professor. What happened? I decided to give my life over to Jesus. And God gave me a harvest. Am I talking to somebody? So God told me to tell you watching on the screen here in the auditorium, if you have not sold your life out to Jesus, I'm not saying come to church. If you have not said, Jesus, be the Lord and master of all my life, today is your day. Today is your day. I'm promising you, God has a harvest on his mind when he wants to give you a seed to sow. If you want to give your life to Jesus, just wherever you are, just lift your hands up unto the Lord. Lift your hands up unto the Lord. I did it in 1989. My life never went backwards. So many have done it before you. This is your seed moment. This is your seed moment. 
this is your seed moment. I want you to say this after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I confess I am a sinner and I ask for forgiveness by the blood of Jesus. Write my name, Lord, in the book of life and fill me with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I commit these ones into your hands. These ones who have sown their lives as a seed into your kingdom. Lord, you said that when you gather up your harvest, the good seed are the children of the kingdom. Daddy God, these are good seed. Their seed will bring forth wheat harvest not weeds in the name of Jesus. They will not trouble their homes. There will be trees of life in the name of Jesus. I cover your people with the blood of Jesus. Daddy God, like a seed is planted and it cannot but bring for the harvest, I decree increase upon their life. I decree harvest upon their life. I decree multiplication upon their life in the name of Jesus. Where there is sickness, where there is disease, where there is infirmity, where there is affliction, where there is poverty, where there is spiritual malnourishment, I command that demonic affliction bound in the name of Jesus. I loose them into the place of God's multiplication in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say, I receive the seed of increase. My life shall never go backward. My life shall continually go upward in the name of Jesus. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.